I'm here, I'm here in beautiful Southern California where it's 102 degrees here, dry, little Santa Ana winds. I'm sick of this hot weather, Patty. Sick of it. Same. I'm waiting it for be oh, winter. Oh, man. Where is, where, we don't have a, see, we don't have a fall in Southern California. This is also true. That's why I'm moving to Colorado Springs. Ooh, get some snow up there, too. Yeah. Well, I won't be there in the winter. I'll just Not be true. there in the summer. So. Yeah, I got you. Welcome t- to The Edge Radio Show. <laughs> Here on award-winning KHTS, I say award-winning because we have won more awards from the federal government, the county government, the, uh, every government you can think of. The owners of this station do more for our community in Southern California than any other radio station, 98.1 KHTS and 1220 AM. Today, like every other day, every other day, every other week this year, we've had incredible guests. Today, ladies and gentlemen, if you're driving in your car and you go home, Go to Hometown Station and put on, because this lady may, may change your life. Sometimes just a conversation, a word, a phrase, you hear, buddy, uh, you hear somebody say something, it pours into your heart, and you remember it. And sometimes one person can change your life forever. 25 years ago, I had a 12-hour conversation that changed my life forever. So that's why I do the Edge Radio Show. I've been doing it for a few years, as you know. And without any further ado, but before I do that, I got to give a shout out to Pamela. How do you pronounce her last name? Dubois. 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 Uh, A new listener in uh, New Jersey, New York, somewhere. We have listeners all over the United States, mainly in the western United States, but Pamela listens to our show. And, of course, my buddy Aaron Schmuckler up in Olympia, Washington. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, the Yes Works. If you want to look at his website, theyesworks.com. All right, here's Kristen's bio. I'm going to just read it because it's significant. I want you to know who she is. The former journalist, Kristen Graham, looks to the latest on brain science. That's me. I'm a, I'm a brain scientist, right, Patty? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a marketing scientist and a brain scientist. An intellectual, yes. I'm not an intellectual. <laughs> uh, uh, let me get back to it. So Kristen is uh, a brain scientist, psychology, habits to figure out how to unlock the potential and performance. She spent 20 years leading culture and communication at global companies, most recently at Amazon. Kristen is now a global speaker and strategist on amplifying your internal superpowers. She's a brain scientist and meets with nerds like me. I'm a nerd. Kristen? I'm a nerd, too. No, you are. I am, too. Kristen, welcome to Southern California. Welcome to KHTS and the Edge Radio Show. How are you, my dear? Kristen? Hello, Kristen? Where are you, Kristen? Did we lose her? Oh, Kristen. She Kristen. should be there. No, she's still in there. Kristen, are you there? Hello, Kristen. Put the whiskey aside. <laughs> Where are you? No, her, she, her number is in there. I wonder. I wonder, and I hear her in the background. Oh, I hear the. She says, "I lost all vo- audio." I wonder what that means. What does that mean when you lose audio? I don't know. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna recall her again. See yeah, if we let's get recall her, her again. One sec. So it's interesting. While we're stalling, ladies and gentlemen, this is a big stall. I wrote a book called The Thinking Room. I've written a number of books. My last book called The Thinking Room. So I talk about two or three subjects. Emily, are you listening? Yes, you are. So the two subjects that I'm the most, let's say, most endeared to is your voice. And you have a great voice, Emily. Great voice. It's your voice that pours into everybody's heart. Learning how to use your voice is critical. The second thing is, are you interesting? And you are. You're very interesting. And you have to be interesting to make it in the world today. If you're not interesting, if you're boring, nobody pays attention to you if you're boring. Kristen should be back in now, by the way. Hey, Kristen, how are you, my dear? I like to just have dramatic pauses. That's kind of my interest. <laughs> I love that. No, no, no. I, I love the stall, the big stall. So yeah. I was just, I was just, I, I gave a brief introduction. I don't know if you heard it. Did you hear the introduction? I heard some of it, and oh. then I got all dramatic. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm a nerd, uh, 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 as I said when we were off the air in the green room, that uh, we might have the same mother because all the things that you talk about, I talk about. So let me start the show by, by two things that I, in my last book I, called The Thinking Room, I talk about the two things that I think you're an expert in. One 
is using your voice is so important. And people don't mm-hmm. learn how to use their voice because when you when you use the right words at the right time and you say the right things, you touch people's hearts. And if you can't touch people's hearts today, you're not going anywhere. The second thing I talk about is you better be interesting. If you're not interesting, <laughs> you don't get people's curiosity. People bypass you. You don't get the raises. Your, your fellow employees don't pay attention to you. And your boss doesn't even notice you. You've got to find a way to be interesting. Am I right or wrong in any of those two points, Kristen? I love it. I love it. Especially the word curiosity, because I think so many people try to strive to get some accolades or achievements, some like intellectual medal. But being curious, it's so much more interesting than being um, accomplished. Yes. Uh, Scott's calling from his plane. Uh, we can't take his call right now. Just tell him. He knows I'm on the air. Right. How does it, he can call from an airplane? I, y- yeah. Hmm. You can do that? Seriously? Okay. We, we kind of want both hands in the wheel, Scott. Yeah, Just Scott. Like yeah, please. Uh, keep, your, yeah, keep your eyes uh, all over. Okay, so when you your last position was at Amazon, which is very, very impressive. Uh, when you look at the corporate culture today, and, and ladies and gentlemen, when I say corporate, you could be an entrepreneur. Uh, we, we use just corporate in a, in a how do mm-hmm. I want to say it, in a global fashion. Uh, most of our listeners are entrepreneurs uh, because the C-suite guys are not listening to my show. So let's talk about how you conduct yourself today with all this technology. You're working from home. How does this all work, Kristen? I don't know. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Well, I yes, you do. Look at you right now. You're putting your voice over airwaves because what you said earlier about using your voice and being interesting, I think technology can be an amplifier for that. It can certainly be a distractor too, as we all know. And we're worried about Scott still trying to call in on a plane. So we are doing a little too much. But I think that there's a lot of different channels now for people to use their voice. And I think that's exciting. What used to be reserved for the few now it is an enabler for the many. All right. So you're calling from Bellevue, Washington. You have a lot of big, bright companies up there. So I'm going to challenge mm-hmm. you a little bit because I'm literally this last several months, I'm confused on the value of social media, on the value of social media as a communication tool. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where, where the value is. I'm trying to figure out how do people benefit from uh, social media, is it a communication tool that you think um, creates relationships? That's what I want to say. Sure, and I understand the question because I think what you're touching on there is that social media specifically, the proliferation of all these channels, can feel a lot like noise. It's like trying to have an intimate conversation in the middle of JFK Airport. At the same time, though, it has really enabled people. I'm going to go back to what you said in the beginning about using your voice and touching hearts. I think it's really enabled people to try something, to put that out there, to feel like they have a chance to be heard in a noisy world. And I think that for sure is the silver lining of what it is enabling. Well, you and I are going to do Friday for sure on uh, Clubhouse Landing Big Whales. Why is it so hard to make money in business today? Also, I think I'm going to do a noontime on Thursday. I hope you can join me. So Mm. it seems to me that in business today, that figuring out how to build a relationship, how to keep that relationship, you know, and I'm old enough to be your father, back in the day, you would pull up, to a client's office, you'd come in, you'd spend an hour, maybe a half an hour. People had time for you. There, Today, nobody has time for you. All the conversations are so short, and to me, they're so shallow. Am I right or wrong on this? Uh, pa- so Patty's, uh, uh, answer. Uh, Patty's head is going up and down. He thinks... You, you, Patty, Patty my, you're seeing it being shallow. Although, to be fair, we were talking to Patty about Tinder before, so I mean, there's a whole <laughs> different level of shallow. That with Patty... Um, maybe that's a separate show. Um, so I, I'm going to give you the MBA answer and say it, it depends. It's certainly, there's a lot more surface to things because there's just an abundance of it. But I do think that we have the opportunity to find quality, not just the quantity. You're right. We don't have hour-long lunches where we can get to know each other in depth. But I think it really allows us, back to your curiosity point, if we, if we can do fewer things better. 
if we can get in and really get a sense of each other more quickly, then we can get to deeper conversations. You and I could have lunch for an hour and talk about surface stuff. Or honestly, Ron, like what you and I have just done today, we got deeper quicker. And I think that's because we had access to each other in different places. That's so because we're interesting. No, no. I'm gonna, <laughs> no, that's because we're two interesting people that get it. I'm looking at uh, your, a little bit of your website. I love how you lead with words matter. So when I was a kid, my mother said, uh, I can't remember what she said. Something about <laughs> Patty. What did she say? So memorable. So memorable, Mom. No. She, <laughs> Patty, what did she say? She What's said. Your name again, Mom? She said. I don't know. She said. Wor- she said words don't matter. Something about sticks and stones. Sticks will break and your, stones may break your bones, bones but, but names, words don't matter. And that's or names a, won't hurt me. Yeah. No, na- words mm-hmm. don't matter. And that, yeah, that was the biggest lie <laughs> that was ever told to me. Uh, no, words do matter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They do matter. They do. Okay. They do. I think that words are the social currency. Back to your point about how can we all connect with each other. Now, I think the larger challenge is we don't need 45 minutes necessarily. I think one of the things with all the channels is can we be more intentional in the words that we use? And if we've seen anything with social media expansion, it's that we do need to be thoughtful about that because they linger. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, no, she's here. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, so let me ask you, on your website, you say, I'm laughing here because I think I'm going to challenge you now. You say okay. write better, faster. What do you mean by write better, faster? Oh, my gosh. Because nowadays when people are sending out text messages, chat channels, emails, I swear to God, it's like a transcript of their head. And we don't have time for that. So we need to get to the point. So I'm a big proponent of put your bottom line on top. What is your blot? Because we're not telling each other bedtime stories anymore, exactly to your point. So if you're going to send me an email or a text, I need to understand why. Otherwise, you've got five seconds before my attention goes on to something else. Okay, I'm throwing That's a flag. Right You're getting topic. a 15-yard flag here. Throw the yellow flag, Patty. Get it <laughs> oh, out there. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, because it. it's stories that people remember. This is my angst, girl. People remember stories. When you tell it, look, do you remember the story that your mommy told you about Goldilocks and the Three Bears? You still remember that story. You can't remember your mom's name, so I'm giving you a flag back. Too. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> okay. You got me there. Okay. Yeah. I do. So, <laughs> you got me so there. So I am not I am not disagreeing with you on that though, but stories are from the conversations and the connections. They're not in a text message. I'm saying pick your channels appropriately. Okay, we're going to argue. Can, we're, this is going to be a fun it. show. It's called the Edge Radio Show. <laughs> so in my coaching, I tell people never to text anything serious because you don't see somebody's face. You don't see their body expression. You can get – see, Patty's agreeing with me. Thank you. I'll give you the money after the show, Patty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kristen, that listen to me now. Listen to me. I've gotten into trouble. I don't do it anymore. I got into such big trouble years ago when I would say things and, you know, I'm a uh, kind of a humorous, weird duck. And Mm -hmm. people don't understand. If you're in front of me, you'll understand my humor. But in a text, no way. Sure. Yeah. All right. I'll pay you. I'll give you the money after the show, too, Kristen. Thank you. So well, hang on now, Ron. Are you trying to tell a story through text, or is texting how you are exchanging details so you can get to the point where you have time to tell the story? Oh, good question. That's it. So use the text as a door opener. Sure. I think all of our channels serve a different purpose, kind of like menus, uh, items on a menu in a restaurant. You know, what, what do you need to do in order to make this a a fulfilling meal. And so I'm not going to tell you my life story over text, but I can arrange quick information sharing to get us to the next channel where you and I are going to connect deeper. Interesting. So, so around, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Figure uh, out your platform. Mm, figure out your platform. While I'm thinking about that's a great question. No, that's that. I don't use Twitter. Uh, maybe you can school me up on Twitter. Emily, do you use Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Uh, no. 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 I deleted it like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's really toxic. Toxic, yeah. Uh, what about you, Patty? Mm. I do have a Twitter, but like I 
barely, I only go on it like very once in a blue moon. I'm more on Instagram. Our wonderful guest today, Kristen Graham, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ex of Amazon. And what you do is you go into corporations and you help uh, create a better culture. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And why do so, cultures get toxic? Oh, gosh. Well, is that a good question? Individual. Yeah, well, yes, let me validate your question. That was very good, Ron. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, but like any relationship, think of individual relationships. They can get toxic if you're not giving them the care and feeding that they need to be healthy and productive. And the same is true. You just amplify that in a corporate environment. Then you add on um, hierarchy. You add on cultural norms. You add on multidiversity. We may have lost her again. Let's check. Kristen, are you there? Her phone's still there. She cut out again, but her phone's still there. Weirdest thing. The weirdest Whatever's thing. Whatever's happened, call her back. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Nothing's sure. weirder on live radio to have this I happen. Know. It's kind of embarrassing. It's weird. All right, I'll get her back. It's a little embarrassing. All right, so uh, I've been a business coach, Coach Ron Tunick. You can look me up on uh, radiotalentpro.com. That's the website, radiotalentpro.com. So when I'm coaching, and I, I have a little different twist than Kristen has in that how do you touch people's hearts? How do you touch them where they need to be touched if you're sending a little quick text? You know, a good old-fashioned pat on the back, a good old-fashioned you look somebody in the eye and you say, thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. That doesn't come through in a text. It doesn't. It, I don't know. That's, that's just me. Kristen, are you on your cell phone? No, brother. I'm just flying my G5 around the skies. I must have had a weird pocket. No, you keep <laughs> cutting out, girl. That's I weird. Do. I, I have no Well, this kind of goes back to what are the challenges of technology exactly this. Yeah, no kidding. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. Uh, we'll figure out uh, Kristen's uh, technology here. And uh, You're in one of the most technology-savvy cities in the world, Bellevue, Washington. We'll be right back on the Edge Radio Show with Kristen Graham. She's live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook. Go to hometownstation.com. We're going to come back and talk about, uh, just before Kristen cut out, the culture that becomes toxic in a corporation. I'll leave you with this tease. In my day, you could look somebody in the eye, Chris, and say, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful job you're doing. Or I would pat somebody on the back. God forbid you can, you, never mind. We'll be right back with Kristen Graham and the coach on the Edge Radio Show. Hi, I'm Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers and Home Care. Our caregivers help you in your own home. A Comfort Keeper can provide companionship, meal preparation, medication monitoring, assistance with personal care, transportation to doctor appointments, all enhancing your independence and safety and the comfort and privacy of your own home. So if you or someone you love could use a helping hand at home, call Comfort Keepers at 287-4200. That's 287-4200. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Centerpoint Branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. 
Great health care just got easier and more convenient in Canyon Country. Facey Canyon Country is now open directly off the Soledad Canyon exit off the 14 freeway. The 37,000 square foot clinic houses Facey Medical Group primary care physicians, pediatricians, and specialists. Facey has easy 24-7 online appointment scheduling for PCPs and PEDS. For more information or to make an appointment, visit Facey.com. That's F-A-C-E-Y dot com. I listen to it all day, every day. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome back. So uh, that's John Fogarty, uh, center field. So he's 75 years old, Patty. He oh, went. Wow. To, the Dodgers invited him to come to Dodger Stadium with his family. Uh-huh. And if you go to YouTube, you'll see him and his family playing center field in the middle of Dodger Stadium. So cool. Whew. John Fogarty. That is awesome. Oh, he's such a cool dude. All right, welcome back to the show we call the Edge Radio Show. Kristen Graham, my wonderful guest. She'll be back many, many, many times. In fact, I'll make her one of the, <laughs> I don't know, we'll give you a title to the show so your expertise is working in the corporate culture to fix toxic issues so let me do a little editorial because i kind of do the same thing i get called in because executives get uh stuck uh too many yes people around them that don't challenge them but here's the issue is how do you touch Kristen? how do you touch your employees back in the day I would look an employee in the eye and say, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for everything you do. Maybe I'd touch them on the shoulder or something. They knew f- that I cared. You know, so today, mm-hmm. you, like you said when we got uh, the break, you're, they're sending a text. Oh, nice job, Emily. You know, yeah, really? Okay. So how, how do you, in the corporate t- uh, culture, how do you help these executives touch their employees in a way, and you know what's going on. You have a lot of resonations going on. You have people bouncing from company Mm -hmm. to company. What is going on in corporate America, girl? Yeah, and I think that you're absolutely right. There's just, there has just been such a brain drain. The last couple of years for sure with the pandemic, but even before then, did you ever watch Mad Men? Oh, are you kidding? Uh, That's one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, That was my ear. You're too young. You don't even know about that ear. You're a baby. Okay, so so that's adorable that you keep saying things like that. So let me answer your question. So you said how how do you how do people know that they matter? Do you, so there was this scene in Mad Men. So Don Draper is this big ad executive, and Peggy came in. She was a secretary who was able to move to a copywriter, and she came in and she said to him, "You don't even say thank you." And he looked at her and said, "That's what the paycheck is for." So there is that old corporate era back when you said kind of toxic issues. And while there certainly is that component of we do trade our time and our talent. But I want to go back to what you said. How do people know these days, especially remote and digital? And because words matter, I think there's two things there. One is that they even make the effort because these days people are so overwhelmed that even getting a text that said thank you. Some people right now, some of your listeners right now would be like, I would love that. But the second part for those who are sending those who want to make this matter is specificity. If you just say to me, hey, Kristen, great job on the show today, be like, okay, okay, thanks. Like, I I appreciate the effort. But you said earlier about storytelling. You can tell stories in small sentences. So if you said, Kristen, when you shared about this during this part of the conversation, that really lit up my brain. Boom. Same amount of length to do it. But you made me matter because you put details in that showed I was memorable. That's the key. Hmm. Hmm. How do I? I can't even challenge you because you're so spot on right there. Kristen Graham, our guest from Bellevue, Washington. What is your website? Do you have a website? So I do. I do. You can always find me on LinkedIn. But right now you can find me on Kristen Graham Com. So I'm going to spell that because of all the vowels. K R I S T I N G R A H A M C O M M S dot com. And I'm going to be releasing a new body of work under Unlock. So, really about using our brains 
and our words to unlock our potential. Do you do you so have a podcast? Lots of nerdiness. Yeah, uh, you're not a nerd. You claim you're a nerd. That's just a marketing tool. Uh, you're not a nerd. Wow. You're not wow. a nerd. Come on. Uh, uh, quite, uh, and then you nerd. pick on uh, 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 my favorite character, John uh, Draper. Don Draper. Don. Don Draper. Excuse, yeah. I'm not. I'm not picking on him. I will have a martini with him all day long. But I mean, you ask about toxic issues. Right there, brother. The Madman, I love that movie. I'm going to watch that movie. Have it's you seen it, show. Patty? It's a great show. No, I have not, but oh. I do want to watch it. You're not going to understand it. You and Emily are waiting. <laughs> no, you're not going to understand. That, the is not, that is not true. Yeah. That is not you true. think they will? Okay. <laughs> everybody <laughs> And everybody's <laughs> smoking. Everybody is smoking a cigarette uh-huh. in that movie. Everybody. <laughs> uh, all right, so back well, to you, Kristen Graham. Do you have a podcast? I don't. I just run around and squat on everybody else's stuff like I'm doing with you. Oh, my God. We should do it. You and I should do a podcast together. So let's talk about the subconscious mind. Because when you look at, so you have these two brains, the subconscious part of the brain and the conscious part. The conscious part is the one that says, I think I'll have an extra drink. Maybe I'll... I'll race the car next to me on the on the highway. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to sleep in today. The conscious mind is what, in my book, I call it the drunken monkey. Uh, it, it's sometimes it's out of control. So, in the book, I talk about we all have these filing cabinets, Kristen. We have our first date, our mm-hmm. first job, our our first this, uh, all of our life, everything, everything is in the subconscious mind. But we have damaged mm-hmm. files. So if you look at the subconscious mind as a big filing cabinet, you've got thousands of files. And what if your file is damaged on your ability to present yourself? Because nobody sat mm. you down when you were a young person and say, this is how you communicate. This is the eye contact that you make. This is how you use your voice. Sometimes you have to lower mm-hmm. your voice. Sometimes you have to lower your mm-hmm. voice. So mm-hmm. so many people have damaged files. They have a damaged file on character or personality, uh, interviewing in a job. Let's talk about this for a second. Who teaches people <laughs> to interview in a job properly? Oh, my gosh. You are pushing my button right now because I have two teenage boys, and I wrote a post on LinkedIn this summer when my son was interviewing for a job, and it went viral because of exactly what you just said. It was um, everything from the handshakes to the eye contact to how you – complete an entire sentence and an answer instead of the rest of it. But I think that what you were asking about too, is how do people even understand the ability to do that? And we're not seeing effective role models in that anymore. So if you have those damaged files about how am I supposed to present myself, we need a software update. And that's what good communications coaching is all about. Quick, memorable things to help me stand out to stand apart, to be interesting, like you say, but also to be able to do small tweaks that feel doable. So many people look at me and say, I didn't get a degree in communications. I, I'm not a, I, I can't do all of that. And I'm every single one of us is a communicator because what we do all day long is communicate. I don't do accounting all day long, but we all communicate. Well said. Kristen Graham, our wonderful guest on the Edge Radio Show, an award-winning K, uh, KHTS 98.1. FM, I said it right, Patty, finally, 98. Finally. 98.1 <laughs> FM, 1220 AM. We're very proud of you. Thank you. So you, you just nailed it. Again, we're the mentors to teach us these things. And this is why I'm saying society, Kristen, is moving so fast. Parents, go to a restaurant and watch what four people are doing. What are they do? They're all on their mm-hmm. phones. Nobody's communicating. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking. Mm-hmm. So we don't learn how to communicate. So you wonder why people struggle in the interview. Interviewing for, for a job, to me, is the most nerve-wracking thing that happens to a human being. And people don't mm-hmm. practice. You know, I practice every day. My vocabulary sucks. I'm trying to get a better vocabulary. I'm, I'm practicing all the things I know that I'm, I'm shallow and weak in. Who's, who's teaching people to practice how to communicate just to get a job, Kristen Graham? Well, Kristen Graham, for one thing, I spend a lot of time at the University of Washington with their, with their grad schools, and we're having this exact same conversation about do I send emojis in my thank you note after how many exclamation marks do I use? Really what we're down to right now is just things we need to be told. We all need a refresher. We all need that software update because so much has come out. There's so much noise. And an interview, 
that's a blind date. And the same amount of nerves and energy and awkwardness and nuance goes into that. And I think one of the best things that we can do when we're in that situation is just look at the person and say, I'm really nervous during this interview. Thank you for your patience with my answers. Wow. So Kristen's going to be my guest, ladies and gentlemen, this Friday at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. We're going to do a room for two hours on why. Here's the topic. Why is it so hard to make money in business today? Kristen Graham and I are going to be doing this room. Kristen will be a whale in the Landing Bing Whales Club on Clubhouse. So, Kristen, let's go back to this culture uh, of corporate America. People are working from home. How do we communicate with people is, I hate Zoom. Do you use Zoom a lot? Oh, sure. I mean, all of the web-based platforms, I, it's, it's a large part of my entrepreneurial life. Um, so where should yeah, we do Zoom? Should we do it in the kitchen, do it in the garage? How, how <laughs> Teach me how to present myself on Zoom because, I, seriously, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, Zoom, it's, it's tricky because you know how you said earlier, if we were in the hallway and having a conversation, we would have – Uh, body language we would have distancing we would have a lot of other clues what we don't do when we're in person is stand one feet apart and stare at somebody's eyes like we do in these webcams it's artificial on so many levels and so and and in the middle of a conversation i'm not going to throw up an emoji when patty's talking i might in my brain though patty just because i think you're hilarious oh thank you that whole thing i (laughs) see you're blushing again i am (laughs) Very easy. Phil, do you see Phil in the hallway? <laughs> yes, she went to the University of Washington. Yes, their football team is crappy, Phil. I got you. All right, sorry. Phil's in the hallway, so okay. I wasn't looking through the window here. <laughs> Leave me alone, Phil. I'm on the phone. Phil. I'm on the radio live with Kristen Graham here. So everything you're saying resonates with me. Where do we learn to have a, an interesting personality like yours? Where do we learn to communicate? Where? So I think the best way to learn is to listen, and it's the thing that nobody is modeling. Because you talked about the, the most interesting people in the room, but really the trick to the art of communication is to help other people feel that they're interesting. You will get their loyalty. You will get their attention. You will get their double heart emojis on Instagram. But we are all so focused on doing a monologue, nobody is investing in a dialogue, and that is how you stand out. <laughs> I'm laughing here. So if I sent you a heart on emoji, would that mean anything to you? Well, we are in the social media life, as you said, where we are measuring our value, our conversational value by likes and reshares and comments and emojis instead of what you were saying earlier, that eye contact, that nodding of the head, that smile. People are looking for clues that what I have said has landed and the social tech platform is pretty flat that way. Well, okay. So, uh, Phil, I'm going to ask her the question. Just be patient. So here, Phil wants okay. me to ask this question. How do you learn how to ask great questions? Because when you ask great questions, that's when you really find out about somebody else. How did you learn how to do this? Oh, goodness. So when I was younger, it was called being nosy, right? Um, but then you trade that into curiosity, as you said. Um, and I, I have a couple of very specific tactics for you. But on a larger level, because most of us don't even take pauses in between sentences with each other, especially on Zoom, you can just see that Joe from finance is waiting for Sally to stop talking before he starts. You can just see that we're all waiting to grab the microphone from each other. So the first tip on conversations is let there be space. Three seconds at least, that's what they taught us in journalism school. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Listening. Listening is true, and you're a good listener, Patty, you too, Emily. Listening Uh is a gift that you give yourself. I love that. I've I've taught myself to pause like 30 years ago. Uh, Yeah, I came home one day, Kristen, and I was having a bad week, and my wife said, you know, and I'm six foot four and a half, pretty handsome, right, Patty? Am I handsome? 
Absolutely. <laughs> so my wife says, you're so big. When you walk into a room, you intimidate people. And, and your voice, mm-hmm. you've got to learn how to speak like a woman. I swear to God, that one comment Ellen made changed my life forever. I started studying mm-hmm. the, the female voice box. Females uh-huh. talk differently than men. Females nurture better than men. Females are more trusting than men. Females are doing a better job in the corporate world than men. Females are uh, starting businesses faster than men. Females get it, Kristen. Well, it's the empathic modeling that we've had as part of our social conditioning. And so I think that there is an art to it. So what you said first is there's a verbal signal. And so if somebody's talking and they are, they're responding, they're saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just that alone, you are signaling to the other person that you are absorbing what they are giving. It seems subtle, but we will lean forward into that conversation more because we're feeling heard. That space, as you just mentioned, that's huge because all of a sudden I feel like you're letting it resonate. You're, you're marinating in what I said. I can't think of a greater compliment. And then two other tactics that I have studied, like you, Ron, um, is how to prompt people to say something else. We are all so afraid that we're speaking in conversational Twitter. I'm going to run out of my characters and then be cut off, that we're always constantly recycling our content. But if you give a follow-up question, that alone, even if they said, I ate a tuna fish sandwich for lunch today. Even if you just do a follow-up to that, they're going to think, wow, they're really interesting. I'm the world's most interesting lunch person. So but funny. a follow-up question, what, did you actually have tuna fish today? No, but it's so interesting. The, the two questions that I ask people is, what do, you, what do you have for lunch? I ask that almost, I'll ask you, what you, have you had lunch yet today? Me, yes. I had a salad. I needed some protein before I talked to you. Yeah. And then the second question is, I'm going to ask you this question when we come back from break. This is a question I ask everybody, and it gets people talking. And when people are allowed to talk, just what you're saying, now the, the best thing is you're creating a little bridge between you and that other person because they get to talk about themselves. I'm going to ask you the question mm-hmm. that I ask everybody, but when we come back from the break. <laughs> On award-winning KHTS, The Edge Radio Show. Choosing the right copy service was a top priority for John Hayes, owner of Hayes Plumbing in Santa Clarita. John's glad he called Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. Uh, well, once we found Sean at Professional Copy Service, um, we've been very, very happy. We started using him right after our factory warranty had expired on the current copier that we had purchased. And uh, Sean and his guys have been uh, far and above uh, better than the factory warranty service. Professional Copy Service, 299-5756. 299-5756. The only authorized Canon dealer for sales and service in Santa Clarita for Santa Clarita Professional Copy Service. We try to keep everything we can in this valley. Uh, we shop local ourselves and we try to use any uh, local merchant as possibly can. Call Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. 299-5756. Call Professional Copy Service immediately. They'll save you a lot of time and get your office staff back up to full production. Professional Copy Service. Santa Clarita's only authorized Canon office equipment dealership. Ask about our free on-site demos. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark, voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Discover Marston's Santa Clarita location open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road and McBean or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. I'm Susan Owen, Managing Partner at OPO Law. I have been named one of the top 100 trial lawyers in the country. And while insurance companies continue to make lowball offers, we fight hard to get you the money you deserve. For over four decades, we have gone to battle with the insurance companies and have obtained over $1 billion for injury victims. If you've been injured, call 888-OPO-WINS for a free consultation. OPO Law, the law firm insurance companies fear most. Don't settle for less. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station.
little uh, local breaking news uh, this, this series now. Go ahead, Patty. Uh, yes, sir. Hi, everybody. Patty with KHTS. Uh, we do have a little breaking news going on. A vehicle has flipped over on Lines Avenue and Orchard Village Road. There is one person currently trapped as of right now. Uh, is an ongoing situation uh, as people try to uh, help the person trapped right now. Uh, for more information, please check us out at hometownstation.com and check us out at KHTS Radio uh, on Facebook. Back we to might, you, Coach. Yeah, we might have a reporter out there. You know, that's the one road I travel to, and yeah. people just speed on that road. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. People speed around town. Slow it down. Slow it down. Yeah, slow it down. <laughs> Our wonderful guest will be back many times, Kristen Graham from Bellevue, Washington. Your website, one more time, Kristen, is? KristenGrahamComs.com, and you can always find me on LinkedIn. So it's Kristen Graham Com? Com, C O M M S. Dot com for communication. Oh, got I'm the you. Word nerd. Got you. I'm the word You're nerd. a word nerd. Okay, Kristen Graham, com, dot com, right? Coms, plural, C O M M S. We're going to take nine minutes just going through my website. Okay, which is I'm going to have to. Off, off the air, I've got to help you get a shorter name. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm a word nerd, too. So the yes, short... I'm in the process. I'm in the process of rebranding, but for right now, I won't. Sh- I won't charge you anything, but I've got some great ideas. You're going to get my stuff for right. free, free forever. I love forever it. Forever and free, ever. Free, free forever. Okay, so I had a great question. Here it is. You ready? I ask everybody this. Tell me something about you I don't know. Oh, I love that question, and I use it a lot. Um, don't say I that. I, I, I originated that question. <laughs> oh, okay, that's the most original, interesting question I've ever heard before. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want me to answer it now? Or yes, we go of back course. To about yes. The question? Tell okay. me something about you. I don't yes. know. I have rung the bell on the New York Stock Exchange. Oh, that's prestigious. I like that. That's pre- You must have uh, had something go IPO, something go public. I didn't. I didn't, actually. I got to. I worked at Expedia, Inc., which was the travel portfolio company for many, many years. And they partner with St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, and every year during Thanksgiving, they did a lot of sponsorship. And so we got invited as a company to go with Marlo Thomas and ring the bell as part of that, and I got to be the company representative. Oh, so that that's... was really, really special. So my wife and I, every single month, give money to St. Jude's. It's an incredible organization. We love St. Very Jude's. Much. It's unbelievable. When you Memphis, look, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Danny Thomas and Marlo, mm-hmm. his daughter. Uh, when you, we only got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to have you back in a month or so to really get into the weeds on this stuff because if people want to change their lives, they have to change their behavior. They have to find a way not only to be interesting, to use the words as you say because words matter, but mm-hmm. they've got to find a way to connect with people. So let's just take the next five or six minutes. Connecting with people is how you build relationships. But you, mm-hmm. I, I talk about, I, I developed something called crock pot marketing. So I go very slow. I let things simmer. Uh, in my coaching business, I may have five or six or seven conversations before I even decide you take, take you on as a client because I want the customer to make the decision to buy. So I create the culture in which people want to do business with me. So I say this to everybody, no matter if you're at work or you're at home, create a culture in which your family wants to do business with you. Create a culture Mm. in in which customers want to come back to your store. Uh, A lot of our uh, KHTS radio is on on stores here in Southern California, so they're, they're listening to what we're talking about. Do you agree with what I'm saying, that creating a culture is something that you can learn to do, Kristen Graham? Oh, absolutely. And I want to go back to crockpot marketing because I was a child of the 80s, and so crockpot. Are you there? Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. This has never happened in 28 years on radio. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, my goodness. It happened again. What? Can you call her back? Yep. We'll just do it. So crockpot marketing is a marketing system that i've developed that allows you to go at a pace i I talk about this in all the books that i've written pacing yourself is so important i have two daughters that are child psychologists and you know they'll call me sometimes crying they're overwhelmed and and the first question i go is 
how fast are you going in your life? Are you going 95 miles an hour or are you going at 35 miles an hour? It's much more comfortable. And you know this. If you're in your car driving and listen to this show, it's much more comfortable when you're going 35 or 40 miles an hour because you can see everything. Kristen, if you ever want to come back on the yeah. show, you got to do this from a phone <laughs> booth and go to a, a phone table. booth. <laughs> so how yeah. do you how do how does one create a culture in which you make a connection to somebody? How do you do that? I, I'm going to go back to what you were saying earlier about the asking great questions and really being willing to listen. I was really resonating with your crockpot marketing because of the marinating. You can just really marinate in the stories. But I would really have us end here with two things. If you want to create a culture and you want to create a relationship or your family wants to do business with you, ask. Ask them more. So what am I? Amazing. <laughs> so oh. back. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what I just heard say. it just, just. It just went off. It just went off. Yeah. So call her back again. <laughs> and we have about. Three and a half minutes. Yeah, so I'll just talk for the next three and a half minutes. So (laughs) if you slow your life down, I I can't be more serious when I say this. We're all moving so fast. You know, Uh, why do uh, Patty's talking about this accident on uh, old old uh, Orchard Village and Lions A road? uh, A car turned over. Yeah, a car flipped over. Yeah. So when you're going at a speed, whether it's in your car, in your life, please. Go at a pace that not only makes you comfortable, but makes the observer, the listener, comfortable. Everybody has a pace. Are you there, Kristen? I think she is. No. I am here. Oh, oh, we, l- we. <laughs> oh my God. we just had to wait this time. We just had to be patient. All right, she's back. I, I've heard you the whole time. It's like I've just been in a coma. Go on. So I'm, uh, I, <laughs> you make me laugh. We'll have you back in a month <laughs> when you sober up. Uh, when, when you look at, uh, and I'm, t- I'm talking to the audience now, I'm saying pace yourself. Find a pace in your life. I was saying earlier that if, when you're going 40 miles an hour, you get to see things rather than 95 miles an hour. People are moving so fast in life, aren't they, Kristen? Mm, because we're so distracted. And I love what you're saying about go slow to go fast. And that means you'll go fast in the relationships that matter. Oh, that's perfect. Go slower to get there faster. Uh, beautifully said. When you look at uh, the world of business, and I'm going to have you back in a month, and we'll get into the, the corporate pressure. And we didn't talk about this. We're running out of time. People feel pressured in our society today. There's so mm-hmm. much, right? Can we talk about this when oh, you come back sure. in a month? You'll be back in October? Absolutely. And we'll talk about Absolutely. it Friday on the Landing Big Whales Club and Clubhouse. Come, because we're going to talk about why it's so hard to make money today in business. Kristen Graham, thank you, my dear. I'm going to have you back. I'll see you on Clubhouse. Thank you, and thank you, and uh, can't wait to do the room with you on Friday, 4 p.m. on Landing Big Whales. It's KHTS, award-winning KHS 98.1 FM, 1220 AM. And uh, Patty, you want to say anything more about the accident? Any uh, update? Uh, nothing on the update. I just heard that the Jaws of Life were requested oh, to uh, open up the uh, car over. Say your prayers. Say your prayers, ladies and gentlemen. All right, see you down the road. <laughs>